Add a shot of vodka to your batter. <laughs> that was a real Sandra Lee pour of vodka. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen. Did you know that here is where dreams become food? Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, enjoy your food. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen. Here, <laughs> dreams become food. One, one of those will work, right? Yeah. Today we're making grilled cheese ramen, donut sloppy joes, Cheeto crusted pork tenderloin. No, today we are making sriracha battered fish and chips. Fish and chips is one of my favorite foods to make. Today I am it doing it for you. So we're gonna kick it up a notch by adding a bunch of sriracha into the batter. It's gonna be really delicious and it's gonna get a little bit spicy. You gotta do the spicy mom shoulder shake. A little bit spicy. We've broken the recipe down to three easy steps, the time codes of which you can find right there to follow along. Let's get cooking. So we're gonna start by making our chips. Chips, as you know, is what the British call french fries. Football is what they call soccer. What a crazy world we live in, right? All you need to do to make delicious french fries at home is put potatoes in cold oil and then heat it up. You'll get some really great chips. You could do that. Or you can go the little extra fun route and do some sriracha beer battered potatoes. I am a huge fan of the hack of adding batter to fries. That is actually what makes a lot of fast food fries really delicious. And so what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna take some normal russet potatoes, also known as just a regular ass potato, and then I'm gonna square it off. Just shave off a little bit to give yourself some nice cutting surfaces to work with. Yeah, just shave your taters. <laughs> Sometimes if you shave your taters, then you can get a wrap. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these pretty thick because real British style fries, but it feels wrong to say British style fries. Chips. Real British chips. I'm um, Gordon Ramsay. Hey, that's what he sounds like. You've seen him on the masterclass videos. He goes, hey, I'm gonna teach you how to make an omelet. Anyways, we're gonna do about a three quarters of a centimeter or an inches point. We're gonna boil them in very heavily salted water and that's gonna cook them all the way through. A lot of the times they'll be shorter. I like a nice long chip so it gives me more ketchup length on the shaft. What, why is the word shaft so funny? <laughs> so we have the water boiling and we're just gonna add a lot of salt. You want it to be salty like the tears of a manatee. No, salty like seawater is what a lot of people say. Because you want the salt to season the potato all the way through. The batter is going to be salted, but you don't just want unsalted potato shafts in there. You want it to get nice and briny. So we're gonna drop our chips into the boiling water and all we're gonna do is let that go for about five minutes. You want them to be cooked all the way through and nice and tender so you can just kind of flash fry them. And then we're gonna dry them off on some paper towels pop them in the freezer just for about an hour or two to set up so it doesn't heat better. All right, the potatoes are nice and blanched and they're still holding up, they're not breaking apart, so we're just gonna get them on paper towels. Key to battering anything is to make sure it's dry. Now we're gonna get these in the freezer and then we're gonna make sure they're dry and then we're gonna beer batter them and fry them. So we're gonna go ahead and beer batter some potatoes. Beer battering is one of my favorite techniques of all time, but it should be called a champagne batter because Miller High Life is known as the champagne of beers. You'd have to know that to get it wasn't even a, it was a throwaway joke. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open a beer. A lot of people, oh God, uh oh, knife slipping. We might have a better bottle opener somewhere. I don't know where it is. A lot of people will put stuff like eggs in there. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think I've got the mwah, perfect beer batter recipe down. So I'm taking a cup and a half of flour and I'm gonna add some salt and baking soda to that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and whisk it up. So next we are going to add our beer to it. Uh, you can use any light beer, you can use any dark beer, you can use anything you want. But I am just using a nice neutral Miller High Life. Another ingredient we're going to add is vodka. Now the reason you add this is because alcohol evaporates at a lower temperature than water. And so when you add a shot of vodka to your batter, <laughs> that was a real Sandra Lee pour of vodka. When you add a shot of vodka to your batter, it's gonna evaporate quicker and it's actually going to create more air pockets, giving you a nice lighter batter. And then of course this is a sriracha batter. So we're gonna take a full half cup of sriracha. You really want to taste all of that chili flavor. It's gonna create this beautiful color. And then actually a really important step to beer battering is you want to let it rest for at least 10 minutes. That way all the flour is actually gonna hydrate and it's gonna give all of the carbonation in the beer and that baking soda some time. Baking powder. Baking powder is baking soda. Whatever! You wanna give the beer and baking powder some time to react with the flour and it's actually going to bind it a little bit and it's gonna thicken up. So if your beer batter looks a little bit thin, it's totally fine because it's gonna thicken up because of science, the wonderful world of... Yo, I failed AP Cam, that was hard. Now we're just gonna let the batter rest and all we're gonna do is dip the french fries in it and then we're gonna make our french fried potatoes. Mm. Drum full call to sling blade, drum full call to kyber blade. Mm. Drop them into the beer batter. I'm just gonna use my hands. I like to take it and I like to shake it off. Then I actually let it kind of drain and rest on a rack. All the excess batter is really gonna fall off. Like if you think about the fast food fries, right? Arby's curly fries, they don't have a really heavy batter on it. It's just nice and light and thin. And so we're gonna let that kind of wick off and then we're gonna throw it in there. It's 
Whoops. And it's just gonna get nice and light and airy. A lot of the excess batter has dripped off and now we're simply gonna drop the fries into the fryer, making sure not to overcrowd the pan because once the fries stick together, it's like how sea otters hold hands while they sleep to avoid drifting away. But it's similar to like that with fries. You don't want to overcrowd them, otherwise they will hold hands and then the sea otters don't overcrowd the oil. All right, so these are gonna fry up pretty quick because the potatoes are already cooked and you're really just getting that batter crispy. Uh-oh, sea otters are holding the hands. I'm gonna pull the fries and then we're just gonna let these rest right back onto the wet batter because I don't have anywhere else to put them right now. I'm gonna eat one. It's hot, but it's good. The fish, we're gonna do the fish now. I love frying fish more than anything in the world. My dad used to take me fishing out on the Willamette River up in Oregon. We would catch fresh brook trout, and then all we'd do is we'd take some flour, he'd crack open a beer, he'd be like, wanna taste sun? And then I'd be like, dad, I'm nine years old. And then he'd pour it in the batter, and then we would fillet and fry up the fish fresh. That's not true, my dad never took me fishing. Uh, but hey, we can still have fun frying fish. We're gonna take some cod, and then we're just gonna dry it off on paper towels. That way, there's not gonna get any steam underneath the batter. And then we're simply gonna salt it. I like when doing fish and chips to look for a fillet that looks exactly like this. A little bit less like the misshapen one, but this one's fine too. Dry it off, salt it, then you're gonna get it in some flour, and then you take the little tail and you give it the old wiggle. It's like when you get covered in delousing powder when you walk into work, you know, and they delouse you, and then you just shake it off. <laughs> get it nice and covered in beer batter, and then you wanna make sure to get the smallest edge of it. Let the excess drip off. The key to this, when you get it into the oil, you wanna do a kind of swishing motion because that's gonna seal up the batter at the end and it's gonna cause the fish to float and not hit the bottom. So our oil is nice and hot at 375. Give it a little swish, just like my dad taught me to do when we didn't go fishing in the Willamette River. And then we're just gonna let that fry for about five and a half minutes. The batter is nice and curling up. It's gonna get super, super crispy. Now I'm gonna work on the other filet. I was watching Jeopardy the other day and it was uh, W Geography Clues. And the Willamette River came up. Alex Trebek is my real dad. All right, so I'm gonna flip over that first filet. Oh yeah, that is looking nice. Just gonna go ahead and gently grab it with the tongs. That is super nice and golden brown. And the fish cooks up real nice and quick because they're pretty thin cod fillets. That is exactly what I want. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on there just because. Oh yeah, wait, listen to it. You can't actually hear it. I thought you could, I don't have any nails because I bite them. Trust me, it sounds crispy. So this fish is also crispy. And now what's a plate of fish and chips without tartar sauce? Still a plate of fish and chips, but we're gonna make tartar sauce regardless, irregardless, in fact. So if you thought that there was not enough sriracha in this entire dish, then boy, do we have a treat for you. It's just more sriracha though, actually. We have a cup of mayonnaise and we're gonna add a quarter cup of sriracha to it. I measured it perfectly with my eyes. Tartar sauce is the perfect dip for fish because you have all the mayonnaise, AKA savory pudding, the best food in the world. And then you're gonna add some nice freshness to it with a little bit of lemon zest. Nicole always makes fun of me for the way that I zest a lemon. I, don't, I still don't know why, but she just laughs whenever I do it. Stop, <laughs> I'm trying my best. And then we're gonna add the juice from half a lemon into that. And we're gonna add some fresh cracks of black pepper to it. Yeah, that's nice, a little fresh cracks. Now I'm gonna chop up some capers. Capers and seafood are like an all time fantastic combination. You just get all that salty brininess and it adds a little bit of that kind of like olive complexity to a dish that you're not gonna get from something like pickles. Hey, speaking of pickles, we got some diced pickles. We're also gonna add to it. Put your minced capers in there, get your pickles in, get some nice shallots and that is all she wrote on the tartar sauce. Who is she? Agatha Christie. Give it a nice whisk. And this is gonna be a very monochromatic plate of food on account of all the deep fry and sriracha. Don't worry, we got some parsley to garnish it with. All right, so we have our fish cooked. We got our beer battered fries fried. We got our tartar sauce tartared. Now this is the important part. This is a very delicate plating technique. Watch very carefully. You're gonna take the fish and you're gonna lay it. And then, but here's the trick is you gotta put another fish and then a large mountain of French fries. Wow, that is really one color of food. This is the best color of food. You see any food that is this color, unless it's like a weird mushroom in the wild, don't eat that, but it's probably gonna taste really good. Throw a little tartar sauce on there. And then here, this is the real trick to really green up this plate of food to make it a nice healthy salad. We're just gonna tuck some parsley right in there. And that is your sriracha beer battered fish and chips with sriracha tartar sauce. I can't wait to dig into it, but first, Let's let's just contemplate what we're doing here on Earth, you know? Each and every day you go out and you just try and make it a little bit brighter for, ooh, french fries. Are good. All right, so we got this all plated up. I need to give it a taste. I'm gonna start with the salad course. It's nice, you get that little bit of a refreshing bite from whatever the green is. The tartar sauce is really excellent. And move on to the potatoes. God, these just feel crispy. You ever pick something up, it just feels extra crispy and you know what it was gonna sound when you bite into it? Oh yeah, this is freaking excellent. 
You're like, why did I do that? <laughs> I don't know. But this is what I decided I should do. Mmm. What an absolute treat. But the real treat isn't the food itself. No, the real treat is friendship and being able to take a six foot bayonet with a spork at the end of it and stab someone in the face with the fish that you made with love. I was speaking of a six foot spork bayonet. Chris, you ready, buddy? Oh my God, I've never been ready to be bayoneted in the face with a love fish before, but I'm ready now, Josh. <laughs> God, Chris, that means the world to me. Let me just, uh, let me grab you a nice bite. Well, let's spear a potato first. I gotta turn this upside down to spear it. There we go, now we can go right back. Get some sauce on it. All right, Chris, you ready, buddy? <laughs> it feels like I'm gonna be actually paying at you. Just get it nice and gently in there. How's that? I like how like fat and cushiony the mm -hmm. uh, the French fry is. It's like a really comfortable body pillow I can snuggle at night. Oh, you sound like my ex-wife. All right, <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna let's get some fish on there. <laughs> we gotta go back upside down. We gotta twirl it like pasta. <laughs> All right, make sure you dip it now, but not yet. Chris, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. All right, here we go, here thank we go, here you, we go. You. Okay. Here we go, coming in. Uh, there it is. Uh, uh, there it is. Be the mm, bigger fish. Yeah, mm, buddy. Uh-oh. Mm, oh, did I get mm, you in the trick yet? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so crispy, so so flaky, tender. It's delicious. I'm not used to tasting. I'm used to, like, listening, but this, yeah. is, this is the best of both worlds. Thank you, Josh. You know what they say? Tasting is like listening for your mouth hole. So thank you, Chris, <laughs> and thank you all for joining us in the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes of our podcast out every Wednesday, new cooking videos every week. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes using hashtag dreams become food. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Rock it with a spork in your pocket. Get the spork tea now at mythical.com.